One day, Rings of Power will release a good piece of marketing. Today is not that day. Galadriel. 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 Seriously, you can't even work out how to say your main character's name. No wonder you can't keep track of the lore. Now, a couple of days ago, Galadriel went on her Instagram and just started attacking the fans. Uh, the showrunners obviously realized that this was a mistake. And so they did what any sane person would do in this scenario. And they did it again. That's how we end up on Yahoo News, with Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power team already fears backlash against the cast. Now, my camera does cover up one of the words there, but I'm not going to move it because I think this framing fits what we're about to see perfectly. <laughs> because the delusional rant already starts talking about Reaver in Kenobi. Another situation where people had legitimate complaints about the character and the way the character was portrayed, which had nothing to do with the physical characteristics of the actor. And yet, Moses Ingram was personally thrown under the bus by Disney, the sacrificial lamb in order to try and and save their series, which quite frankly was awful. It was a multi-billion dollar corporation taking advantage of an individual simply so they could attack the fans and blame them for their terrible show. And that is exactly the situation we find ourselves in with Rings of Power. Now this article does start talking about real life trolls who are off to a great start, but strangely says that people are voicing their gripes about Ishmael Cruz? And his name links to this article which is about Deezer, so I don't know. All I'm saying is if you can't tell the difference and you ever considered it might be your fault. Then we go on to talk about Galadriel, or Galadriel, I don't know which one it is, the cast are gonna have to tell me once they've decided how to pronounce it themselves, and says that apparently she doesn't look feminine enough because she's wearing armor, which once again misrepresents the entire situation. Yes, a woman in armor doesn't look very feminine, and Galadriel is supposed to be feminine, but the problem with her doing in Rings of Power specifically is that she never wore armor and led armies, that literally never happened in the entire history of the universe. The problem is that you're breaking canon because she wasn't a warrior, and if I know that, that means the showrunners know that, which means they knowingly changed it and didn't care. But despite this, the show's executive producer, Lindsay Webber, is ready to shut this down as soon as possible. We're all up for criticism, but we're not up for really bad things. And I do find that line particularly enlightening because you haven't actually given any examples of things that people are saying, which you're not up for. And you're the one who's actually conflated those two things. You've conflated criticism with everything else which implies that if you actually showed the messages which you are determining to be that way, then the general population would have just assumed that was criticism. Because the two of them are entirely different things. They are totally separate with no crossover. So it shouldn't be something you need to differentiate, and yet you chose to. Because you know people would perceive it differently than the way you're using it. But you won't be specific about the comments that anyone's got. You won't define it. You won't set where the line is that you think you find acceptable. Because then that would mean people could look at it, analyze it, see whether that was actually reasonable or not. No, you want to keep it vague so you can cast a wider net as possible over as much criticism of the show as you can. Nobody means it. It's not well put together. They're just dirty trolls over there, along with the peasants and the plebs. And that is exactly the attitude that John D. Payne had, because although it says he had a more poetic response, it just means he cited Tolkien by calling the trolls creatures of dull and lumpish nature that had no more language than beasts. Bearing in mind he's talking about Tolkien fans here, you know, the people that read his books. One of the difficulties with coming after an IP which is from the books in the first place is that the fans of it are by definition people of language. Especially when you're talking about Tolkien and the Silmarillion, where it's just names and dates and a rough description of what they did. There's no story as such like you get in most other novels. It's far more of a slog to get through. It requires a far more dedicated reader base. It's one of the reasons you've been facing so much backlash and how it's continued on every single video you've ever posted. These are people that love the work so much they went back and read the books that were never intended to be published, and you dare say these are the people with no language. Oh no, those people are coming when the show releases. When the show releases, that's when you're going to get a load of extra people who have never read the books at all, and then they're going to tell you it's crap as well. But my favorite thing about all of this is it really shows that the fans have got under your skin because you decided to attack them with a quote from Tolkien, which is exactly something the fans did to you way back on February the 14th under your first trailer with 1.9 million dislikes, where everyone spammed the same quote and it got under your skin so much, you had to go and delete them for literally weeks because people kept coming back and kept posting them again. Now, since that point, the fans have changed their tactic. They've started to make new original ways to get to you. But despite all that, you remembered it, didn't you? It got under your skin to the point where you felt like you had to get it back all that time ago. All the way since February, that's just been eating away at you to the point where you just couldn't resist it anymore and you had to come up with your own one. For six months, that's been on your mind and this is the best quote you could find. 
And it's a quote which is wrong and doesn't work. I mean, honestly, John, your insult game could do with a piece of work. I mean, I'll give you a tip. If you really want to insult someone, you've got to go for something they're insecure about. Hit a little bit of a nerve. And I can guarantee you that one thing that fans of Tolkien are not insecure about is their ability to read and use language. But as we know, John Payne has a wide breadth of experience in the television and movie making industry. As you can see on his IMDb page, his previous credits involve Star Trek Beyond, which he was uncredited for. So you've got to choose something they're probably insecure about. But Yahoo says that John used his connections that he made during this role, which I can only assume he did so badly he didn't even get credited for it, to get the Rings of Power gig in the first place. Because it says here, the duo were able to land the gig thanks to their old bad reboot boss, who was kind enough to impart some advice as they head into the launch month. Trust your instincts, he said in an email, but say, I don't know a lot. Trust me, if there's one thing the showrunners could say that everyone would believe, it's I don't know a lot. And also, probably would have worked out better for the showrunners as well if they'd said that, rather than talking about connecting stars in the sky. That's why when Screen Rant says that the Harfoots could be Rings of Power's biggest mistake, I'm like, no. The biggest mistake was making it. Because Rings of Power is going to be the most expensive TV series ever made. We're already over a billion dollars and we're just one season down. Now Jeff Bezos can say that Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power is a responsibility. It's not all about making money. I do hope we do Tolkien's work justice. He says taking on such a beloved world is a privilege and a responsibility, and it goes beyond making a commercially successful show. But it does show that this has to be commercially successful, because Amazon is a business. They can definitely afford the show no matter what. So many people have got Amazon Prime subscriptions anyway just for the shopping. But that mentality isn't what actual business people think about, money men think about. This needs to be a commercially successful show for them to consider it a success. Because the Lord of the Rings movies, they made money, and people have tried to drag those movies down, drag Peter Jackson down. Oh, Christopher Tolkien didn't like it. Because bounding into comics quotes him, Tolkien has become a monster, devoured by his own popularity, and absorbed into the absurdity of our time. You know, making things for the modern world is so often quoted by the Rings of Power cast. This represents progression. This represents an acknowledgement of where we have been, and a will to get to where we need to be. The chasm between the beauty and the serious of the work and what it has become has overwhelmed me. The commercialization has reduced the aesthetic and the philosophical impact of the creation to nothing. There is only one solution to me, to turn my head away. He absolutely may not have been a fan of the movies, he may not have been a fan of the commercialization of it. But let's have a look at what Amazon's doing, shall we? Because if he didn't like the movies, imagine what he'd think about Rings of Power ice cream, yeah, that's very Tolkien, I think we can all agree. Or we can have Kit Kats, with more Kit Kats, even an extra dwarf little Kit Kat. Why stop there? Let's have the entire brand, shall we? We'll have all the Kit Kats over there, and we'll just throw in some lion bars on the side for extra work. Oh, more modernity. Obviously, later is better, it's more recent, and nothing is more modern than a Kit Kat and a lion bar. I can't wait to see them in Rings of Power. When Galadriel goes to a place she's never been, wearing armor she never wore, leading an army that she never led, talking to Muriel, who's a person she never met, who's played by a person she couldn't possibly be, and then they just go to the freezer, and they just get out a nice load of ice cream. Cut to the freezer, and you see a massive Samsung logo. Nothing respects the lore and the heritage of Tolkien than that. Well, there might be one thing, actually, now that I come to think of it, yeah. What about a Lord of the Rings keyboard? Is that commercialized enough for you? <laughs> this is the officially licensed Lord of the Rings dwarfish keycap set. Personally, I can't wait for my pink Galadriel racing car gamer chair. Oh, that'll be a wonder to do the reviews in. <laughs> All I'm saying is dragging down the movie is not exactly the best strategy you can use to defend the show, because the further you try and drag that down, the further Rings of Power sinks as they do every single thing worse. So if Christopher had to turn his head away at the commercialization of the movies, well, oh, he's seen nothing yet. But if there's one thing we know Tolkien despised, it's allegory being injected into his work, which is why Rings of Power pushed as much of it as they possibly could into it. That's why we've got our girl Galadriel talking about the importance of good and layered representation in films, to show young people that female characters can be just as compelling as their male counterparts. Because presumably they think girls can't just look around at the real world and see women. No, the only way they can learn they can do anything in the real world is obviously by looking at an entirely made up fantasy one. If I don't see myself as an elf, how am I ever going to grow up to be a doctor? Hey, all I can say is maybe Galadriel should be a bricklayer we could do with evening out those numbers a bit. But she even says, I didn't read the books and think I wish there was more type Bs in this, because I just took it as a given as that was the way things were. And you were right, that's the way things were. 
That's the way Tolkien wrote them, and that's the way he intended it to be. So therefore, if you just added a load of extra ones into his work, that would be deliberately changing it from what he intended it to be. From the way things were. But she's not done yet. No, she wants to really nail it home. I'm standing on the shoulders of type Bs who spilt metaphorical blood. I'm glad you said metaphorical because they didn't really do anything. Literally, the only thing that's happened to get you to this point is JD and Payne had you in an interview and said, yes, not a single person on earth has fought for this or spilt metaphorical blood. Unless Patrick McKay's got a secret that he hasn't told anyone about. I hope young people, should they watch this, will think this is just the way things are. Yes, if only we can delude the young people into thinking that this is actually Tolkien. Maybe someone will watch the show and the young child will look up at her and say, oh, I hope one day I can destroy a great work of literature too, and she'll be so proud. But this attitude of I'm changing the world, this TV series means so much to so many people. Little children everywhere will suddenly realize that actually a world exists and they can do stuff, but only because I've done stuff. We've got to create fake histories where people spilt metaphorical blood in a massive war to actually overcome the evil empire of man that held us back for generations. The story of something that literally never happened. And if you want proof that it never happened, how about the fact that Morphid Clark fainted when she found out she was cast in Lord of the Rings? It's not exactly battle tactics, is it? Without promoting the personal history of David Copperfield when she found out, she realized it was a big deal for her, passed out during the Q&A, and was caught by a lovely security guard. I mean, at this point, unless the metaphorical blood was spilt because someone fell over and cracked their head open on the floor, I don't really think there was much of a fight or a challenge going on in the past. Just that everyone was reasonable, there were natural negotiations happened, and you're making up a false narrative of pain and suffering. But no, you're really the rebel without a cause. You go, girl. Of course, it is doubly strange that Morphid Clark should be the one complaining that there weren't more of them, considering she's playing Galadriel, who is actually one of the canonical characters from Lord of the Rings. And it just goes to show that when you're unhappy about the way things were and people ask you well okay you're unhappy there but how many do we need for you to actually be happy the answer will always be more what you've created is a problem that can't be solved it's deliberately never solved because at the end of the day you can use that as an excuse to always push further you will always want more and when it's a problem that can never be solved it does raise the question of why should anyone actually bother trying if you'll never be satisfied if you'll always want more then why should anybody care because it comes across as you're really just complaining to complain you're trying to make some false narrative about how you've been really hard done by and you're changing the world because it makes you feel big and strong and powerful. And you're not the only one. There's lots of the cast which are trying to do this same thing. Everyone wants to seem as if they're doing something far more impressive than they actually are. Because all you're really doing is just lying on camera. I mean, when you're playing Galadriel, not during the marketing, although that's a possibility as well. And so I have to ask, if you're so obsessed with literally changing Tolkien from something it was never meant to be, if you're part of the commercialization of it, the complete and utter destruction of any themes that were placed into it, to the point where Christopher Tolkien had no other choice but to look away, the incessant need to change the characters, make things look like the real world, the modern world, and to fill the world full of allegory, only for you to come back and respond to it with a quote that doesn't even make sense in the context of the insult that you intended it to be. And I have to say, to me, it doesn't look like the fans are the ones to blame. It doesn't look like they have actually done anything wrong. Not only is no examples of anyone saying anything wrong being posted, but you're already conflating criticism with it in the first place. And with everything else that we can already prove that you've done or made up. I have to say, I'm not going to take your word for it, the fact that you'll actually accept criticism and not try to claim it's something else. Something that's more more perceptionally beneficial to you in the news cycle. When you've got actors coming out and talking like they're saving the world and inspiring the next generation of elves, it doesn't really look like people's feet are on the ground. It doesn't look like they're actually a fair judge of the difference between those two. Because when all you've got is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And when you view the world through that lens, which is what the cast has actually said in the past they are doing, then everything takes on that tone. No one's criticizing you legitimately. No one's criticizing you for you or what you're doing or your own actions, no. It's obviously for your physical characteristics because that is exactly how you judge everybody else yourself. And you assume 
everybody else sees the world through the same lens you do. I'd put it to you that the problem isn't criticism. The problem lies far, far closer to home. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. This video is a little bit more flippant than the rest. There's a lot more stuff coming. There's a lot more videos come out and so many more articles over the next two weeks as we lead into launch that it's going to be good. So if you like the video, press like, subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.